Hi everybody, it's Peter here, your Ginger Jolly Geek. Welcome back to Triple G Comics. So, as you probably all know, I um, sent off 35 books to CGC um, a little while ago, start of the year. Um, and they've all come back now. So hopefully you'll have watched my videos on them, links up above to those. If you haven't, please go back and watch them. What I thought I would do is just a quick video to show you um, how I keep track of my comics because my memory is shocking and I spend a lot of money on books. So quite often I'll get a book back from CGC and I don't know whether um, if I was to sell it, I've made money, I've lost money, or if I've just broke even. Um, so I've got a bit of a system, um, just a very simple Excel spreadsheet, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. It helps me to keep track of, um, of the different books I've been buying um, and how much I've paid for them. What I then do, is add in the um, the cleaning and the pressing cost, and then I add in the grading cost, and um, total that all up, and then when my books come back from CJC, I can do a bit of a, a rough guess using GPA and things like that to see how much the books are worth at, at that point in time, and that helps us to work out whether the prices of, of um, or what, sorry, that helps us to work out whether I've made money or lost money if I was to sell them. What I've done is I've um, had a look at all 35 books, I've added, as I've said, the, the pressing, which is always done by the marvellous James Gower at the Comic Clinic. Um, and then I've also added my um, grading costs. So how much it takes to process them via Scots, who I always use, and then the CGC costing. Um, I've averaged that out to the books. Um, and then um, when my books have come back, I've had a look at what the GPA is. So using the, the GPA census value, looked at the, the last... Um, three months worth of sales and averaged it out basically what i've also done for any pence copies i might have or for any copies that have come back with a purple label um i've taken off 20 percent so i've knocked 20 percent off now i know some people will argue that actually pence copies are getting quite good prices these days just for my peace of mind i've, I've, I've averaged it out and taken off the 20 percent then converted it from dollars to pounds so, in this video then, um, I'm going to show you the cost of the books uh, in total. I'm then going to show you, if I was to sell them at that point in time, um, how much money I would make or I would lose on selling them. It's worth us saying, the vast majority of the books that I've sent off on the, with the CJC um, sending are from my personal collection, so I won't be selling them anyway. But it just, to be honest, it helps me to justify the hobby with my wife, if I'm honest. If I can say, hey, hey, look, I've made 100 quid on a book, it means the next time I want to spend some money on a book, it's a little bit easier, isn't it? Obviously, I don't tell her I've lost money. We just forget about that. So, um, I'm going to cut to a different kind of filming now, because I'm going to do this on my computer. I hope you enjoy the video. Let us know what you think. Let us know if this is the kind of video you are interested in or not. Um, and thanks very much for watching. Catch you in a bit. Hi everybody, welcome back. Um, so we've swapped over onto the PC, so apologies for the, the camera quality, but um, basically this is where we're gonna show you the different um, methods I use to keep track of how much my comics are worth and how much I'm how much I'm spending on comics, to be perfectly honest. So just load up the main spreadsheet. This is how I keep an eye on, on what I am spending. So as you'll see along the top there, we've got the name of the book, the issue number, the price I've paid, whether that be from eBay or from um, from Facebook, things like that. Kind of be chewed with pences and things like that. So I always round up. So it might be 4 95 and I've rounded up to a five or whatever it may be. I then put the press cost in there. And as you know, a um, bit like slabbing costs, the price changes for that depending on what grade of book you're putting in or the age of the book. And um, again, I tend to just round up or down. I don't, don't worry about pences. This formula then calculates a total cost. You'll see later on in the video as I'm showing you different things. We'll then put the grade in when the books come back. I put a price check for the date I've checked the books and then I put a value. The highlighted books are books that are um, either currently away with CGC or have literally just come back. So you'll see here, the highlighted ones, Amazing Fantasy 15, um, I paid 130 pounds. Look at that, 340 pounds, what was I thinking? Anyway, we paid 130 pounds for that one. It cost us 15 pounds to press it. 
cost us roughly 30 quid to get it slabbed so total cost 175 pound and it's come back as a 9.2 and we'll put in this box later on um a price check based on the 90 day average on gpa and then another formula works out basically that cost versus that cost and it'll tell us whether i've made money or lost money so you can see from the spreadsheet i, I get a variety of stuff and um, ranging from different comic book ages different kinds we've got alien number one there you know if we go down it's all alphabet alphabetical um astonishing x-men books batman books batman adventures 12 just pick that up um brute force number one look at that one pound fifty now a lot of these books may never get to a press they're just it's a way of me keeping track of of what i've spent on them um this has been running now for probably about six months or so i think i've been i've been putting things on this not all my books go on this because sometimes i forget um but quite often i'll sit and i'll stick the books on just so i can keep an eye on things and, and keep a bit of a, a clue as to my spending habits um it also totals up I'm scared to look but it uh, look at all those stray dogs i went a bit mental there didn't i i've got another set since then as well um it also totals up at the bottom um how much i've spent and um yeah look at that shit don't show the way for that 15 grand crikey anyway let's move on so that's my current active list of, of books that i've kind of i've kind of got sorry i'm zipping through that there um i'm sure some of you will be freezing the screen to see how much i paid for certain things um okay so we'll get rid of that one and this is the interesting one so all those books that were highlighted in, in yellow i've moved over into a new spreadsheet um and i've put down the grades that i've received on those books okay i've then checked them as i said before using gpa and um, 90 day average um, and converted them from from dollars to pounds so i'm sorry if i've got any american um, viewers watching you'll have to do that conversion yourselves from from um, pounds back to dollars but basically i've checked all these books on the 13th of the 7th and i've put down the the value um, at that point that those books are worth and then it's worked out for us a profit or loss so let's just look at a few of these books amazing fantasy 15 first appearance of adam Ad Ad amadeus cho um got one book for 130 quid which was very reasonable i paid 340 for one i'm not sure what i was doing there i think that was formal you can see with the pressing costs and the slabbing costs total cost for those books came out 175 and 385 my grades back i got a 9.2 and a 9.6 and when i checked the 90 day average at that point um the value on the book was that so for one book i paid 42 quid if i was to sell them now and bear in mind that a lot of these books are not going to be for sale a lot of these books are from my private collection um so one book i would have made 42 quid profit one book at this point in time i've lost eight pound now really important to see and you'll see this with the book a little bit I want to show you in, in a little bit really important to see that the prices of these books fluctuate depending on the market obviously um, and that market at the moment for the kind of books i'm picking up seems to be dictated by what's popular on disney plus what's happening in the movies the mcu mcu movies it's very rarely directed based on comic books if, if i'm honest it's not really that excited about trends in comic books popular characters it's predominantly based on mcu and disney plus so these books could go up they could go down a lot of the books i sent off on this particular 35 book submission were books that um, i was specking on or i thought um, had the potential to rise in value so amadeus cho i am sure will hit the mcu or the disney plus so i would expect those values to go up and i can do a date check at a, at a further point in time so a bit of a case in point this one here avengers number eight most of you will recognize avengers number eight as being the first appearance of kang the conqueror paid 80 quid for that um a while back 15 pound to press it 41 pound to slab it so total cost 136 pound came back at a 4.5 check the price on the 13th of the 7th now that's important check the price 13th of the 7th the value was 544 pound so 
I've made at this point in time, 408 pound profit, which is really good going, as you can imagine, happy with that. But going back to this date, again, those of you that are following the MCU will know that I checked these prices. I think that's the week before the end of the Loki TV show. And you'll know that as soon as that TV show came out, um, the last episode showed Kang. We already knew he was coming. I don't know why it was a big surprise because we already knew he was in the new Ant-Man film. But anyway, he appeared in the Loki TV show and that book has just skyrocketed. So this price will not be correct at this point in time. If I was to, to look to sell that, I would have to have, obviously check it now. And I know I will have made a lot more money than £408 because the book has shot up in value. So lots of books there. Interestingly, as I was pulling this list together, I got a little bit depressed because um, other than the first book, the next three books I lost money on. So a little bit disheartening. But as you can see, as we go down, I've started to make good money. So there's £408 profit, as I said, on, on the first appearance of Kang. No doubt much more than that now. £472 profit on Batman Beyond One. And I guess this is what I'm trying to show with this video. Sometimes it really is, if you're in this comic book game to make money, which I'm not, I have to be honest. Um, I know it might feel like it because I'm, I'm looking at all the figures here, but I'm in this market because I love comics um, and I recognise that to buy bigger books, I need to sell books, basically. But pure look, Batman Beyond, I like the character, saw it on eBay, picked it up. Not long after that, we heard that Michael Keaton was reprising the role and there was lots of spec about it. And that book again took off. So paid 90 quid for it, now worth about £607. And um, profit, £472. So, you know, not bad going. If we go down them again, looking at some of the profits, massive one down here. Um, again, if you're willing to spend big money, you can sometimes make big profit. So Strange Tales, it is a Pence version. Worth mentioning for any Pence versions or restored versions, um, I've knocked 20% off the GPA price just to give myself a, a bit of a, a grounding for the UK market. So Strange Tales 110. Again, most of you will know that that's the first appearance of Doctor Strange. I paid a fair bit for that one, £566. Came back at a, a grade 3.5. Current value, 2177 so I've made a grand and a half profit on that book if I was to sell it at this point in time. Not bad. So, and as we'll go on, you know, we'll, we'll see all the different books going through there. Um, what's the total then? And this is the bit that really helps me to continue to, um, to be able to buy comics because we're not a rich family and we are working class family I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a nurse so not massive wages coming into the house my wife's a teacher um so for me to spend money on books i need to be able to show that i'm able to make that money back in at this point in time or in the future if this is where i don't know where retirement fund or one nest egg so for for me in my mind to be able to justify the money i spend i need to be able to see that actually if i was to cash out now I could get a bit of money back and this kind of an operation this kind of a spreadsheet does just that so as you'll see from the bottom here um spent in total six grand on books on grading and all the rest of it um <clears throat> the books value 15 and a half grand so if i was to sell them all now i would make back in profit pure profit about Around about ten grand, nine thousand two hundred thirty pound. Worth worth remembering that that's nine thousand two hundred thirty pound pure profit, because I've taken all the other expenditure out of it. So from those thirty five books, I make if I was to sell them about ten k. So I don't know what that is in dollars for those watching. I just take a rough stab in the dark and see about fifteen thousand. I don't know. Um, I put it on screen for you. So there you go. So. If you're in the, the comic book market to buy, to sell, to trade, to make a bit of money, I think if you're wise, if you um, if you don't jump into FOMO, fear of missing out, if you calculate your, your, um, your buying a little bit, 
if you watch the trends, if you see what's coming out on Disney Plus, um, I think there's good money to be made if that's what you're into. Um, now, what I'll do is that 10 grand profit sits in my mind for the next time um, I get challenged on buying a book or on the next time I'm watching a book and I think, oh, I really want that. I think to myself, actually, do you know what? It could be one of these ones where I'm going to make three, four hundred pounds in the future. So there we are. Oh, isn't that pretty? Um, let us know what you think of this. Let us know if it's the kind of video you want to see. Um, I'm not doing this to rub people's noses in it to say, well, hey, look at how much money I've made or anything like that. I'm doing this to just try and demonstrate um, and justify to myself, really, um, that spend money on comics actually is financially. A sound move and i think you know we've seen that probably haven't we over the last um the last year that actually a lot of these investment companies these stocks and shares guys in america are actually buying comic books now because the percentage turnover can be pretty impressive okay thanks very much for watching please please do comment let us know what you think um if you want to see future videos like this if you're not interested let us know as well um hopefully you found it interesting hopefully you like the way i organize my spreadsheets um and please do uh, keep watching and subscribe for future content thanks very much take care bye bye